school shooting in Parkland, Florida. This isn't just a bunch of kids that are talking and not having action. We're all standing up together. If the adults didn't want to listen to us, we were going to make them listen at that point. We were broken as a community, as a school, but now we're stronger than we were before. On graduation day, take an emotional journey with the students who said, never again. Voices of Parkland, healing out loud, tomorrow at 10 on MSNBC. Thanks for staying with us. President Trump is now just 10 days away from an historic face-to-face -face meeting in Singapore with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. After several weeks of will they or won't they, the president now says the June 12th summit, well, that is on. Trump made the announcement shortly after he met with Kim's number two, Kim Jong-chol, in the Oval Office Friday. But the president is also lowering expectations for the summit, saying no agreement is likely to result from those initial talks. June 12th will be in Singapore. Uh, it'll be a beginning, I don't say, and I've never said it happens in one meeting. You're talking about years of hostility, years of problems, years of really hatred between so many different nations. But I think uh, you're going to have a very positive result in the end. All right, let's bring in first director of national intelligence under President George W. Bush and former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, John Negroponte. Ambassador, thanks for being with us. You, you've been seeing the reports out of the meeting there uh, of Chol there, Kim, uh, Kim Yong Chol, who met with the president and his staff here. What do you know? Was it, was it a, a good outcome? And is this good for the setup to the meeting in Singapore? Well, I think the president's right to manage expectations. Uh, the best I think that can come out of it would be the establishment of some kind of, uh, of uh, process, uh, some kind of roadmap uh, towards uh, the ultimate goals, which are uh, both uh, denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and normalization of the relationship. And I think the president's right to point out uh, that uh, years have gone by uh, with this situation. It started back in uh, June of 1950 when North Korea uh, invaded the South. So it's not as if this thing started yesterday. Uh, and this is the legacy of the Korean War that uh, the president uh, is taking on. And, and I'm impressed, I got to say, by the amount of time he's already, amount of personal time he's already devoted to resolving this. And I think that that's uh, one of the elements of the situation that I think gives rise to hope that uh, some progress might be made in regard to this extremely difficult situation. Ambassador, if you're sitting on the other side of the table here in Singapore, I understand it's going to be the Fullerton Hotel there, uh, just overlooking the bay. If you're sitting there and you've got the negotiating, uh, negotiating team as well as Kim Jong-un there, what does Kim Jong-un want? Does he want money? I understand right now one of the sticking points is deciding who's going to pay for his hotel room because it's $6,000 a night, some of the reporting <laughs> is saying. If he wants money, how do they properly get that to him? If he wants respect, how do they give that to him? Well, I think, first of all, he's going to get a lot of respect uh, just as a result of having uh, held a meeting with the President of the United States. This has been an aspiration of North Korea for a long, long time. Uh, so so that would be the first point. Se Secondly, I think what he really wants, and well, I think this is really the key issue, is this a tactical ploy on his part just to get some kind of sanctions relief, or does he really want to find some kind of a long-term solution to the situation on the Korean Peninsula? If it is the latter, then I think uh, what he really wants is some promise of uh, normalization of relations with us, uh, uh, the prospect of integration, uh, integrating mm -hmm. North Korea with the global economy, and getting things really back to a place that they just haven't been uh, in the past uh, almost 70 years. As, as you know so well, and I say, I, I say that uh, phrase again, it takes a long time. Uh, this is going to be one meeting. Uh, and so you're going to look for uh, the indicators that show that the at least uh, start to this is good. Is, is it going to be as simple as uh, in, uh, allowing investigators in again from the IAEA? Is it going to be, yes, you can bring in a McDonald's, which is really uh, would be a, a, a grand icon from the West into North Korea? What would be some of the indicators that you'd look for coming out of this meeting? Right. Well, you've, you've mentioned a couple of practical things. I, I think also perhaps at the level of policy, I think it would be some kind of statement that both uh, uh, both the parties favor uh, 
denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, that they would like to uh, take steps to bring a formal end to the Korean War, mm -hmm. and that they would like uh, to see progress towards a normalization of relations. If there one specific thing that I would really like to see the North Koreans commit to, I don't know if it's too early to do that, it's for them to commit to uh, rejoin the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, which they withdrew from in 2003, and which kind of set the stage for their development of nuclear weapons. Ambassador John Negroponte laying out the potential plan that might work, that might work there. I appreciate it, Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's bring in Rolling Stone senior writer Jamil Smith and Sung Yoon Lee, professor of Korean studies at Tufts University. Thank you both for being here. Jamil, we were looking at the president, and you heard the ambassador say here a lot of personal time from this president into this very topic, this potential meeting, now they're saying that's on in Singapore. Right, and I think that's been the big mistake that's been made here. If you don't want to heighten expectations in the first place, what you do is you do not have the President of the United States at the meeting. You, didn't, you don't have Kim Jong-un at the meeting. You have lower level staffers, if, you know, if not even the Secretary of State, handle this. And the problem is he's put in place a Secretary of State that is not really terribly interested in diplomacy, not experienced in diplomacy, uh, both this one and the previous one. And so we're, we're looking at a situation where he's he's built up this this meeting as if it, he's going to solve this, as if he's going to end this. And really, the process, as the ambassador pointed out, takes a lot longer than this. So I, I really want to know how the expectations game is going to play. You know, especially when he comes back with very little other than a hotel bill for uh, for a Korean dictator. Song Yun, uh, as we finish out the week now, and you see uh, the very visit there from Kim Yong Chol, who has his own very storied history that you can certainly talk about better than we can, is this the right precursors to a successful outcome in Singapore, what you've seen so far? Absolutely, that is for North Korea. It was a remarkably successful visit for the North Korean. Basically, he got whatever he wanted out of President Trump. There's no need for the President of the United States even to meet this person who's been blacklisted, designated by the U.S. and South Korea for his alleged roles in lethal attacks against South Korea on two occasions in 2010, as well as the massive cyber attack in 2014 against Sony Pictures Entertainment. The fact that President Trump met with Mr. Kim suggests that Trump is very eager to effect the summit meeting. And for the president to say, oh, I told him, I told the North Korean, you know, take your time dismantling nuclear weapons. That basically would be construed as carry on building bombs, further advancing your capabilities to say that maximum pressure, he's not going to use that phrase anymore. Of course, the military right. threat component went out the window the moment that Kim Jong-un flashed smiles and made his dramatic outreach to South Korea and to the so United States. But basically, Trump said yesterday, I'm not going to enforce right. sanctions. Sanctions enforcement, like domestic law enforcement, takes time, continual effort. It's not like something you can just no. switch on, like and electricity. And so North Korea had a very good day yesterday. In 15 seconds, Sung Yoon here, as you know, the six-party talks were quite extensive. They did not work in the end, at least uh, as of today. Moon Jae-in, how crucial is he to a, a positive outcome uh, come this June 12th? 15 seconds. I'm sorry to do that to you. The South Korean president is very eager to engage North Korea to go back to the heady days, 2003 to 2008, when he was the chief of staff in the Blue House, giving North Korea $900 million worth of aid, most of that in cash. Mm -hmm. That would be a, a return to a very good arrangement for the North Korean regime. All right. Sung Yoon Lee, thank you so much. Uh, Jamil Smith, stay with us. We'll have you at the top of the hour, and we'll be right back. It's all about the double eyes with Zydra, the only eye drop.